my dear dental mates first of all thank you thank you so much for this beautiful abundant family i express my deepest gratitude to all for the love you guys are showering on me now let's get started with the video so when we're talking about maxillary molar let us first look at its anatomy this is the crown of maxillary molar this is the mesial distal buccal and the lingual side maxillary molar can have four cusps mesial buccal distal buccal mesial palatal and distal palatal cusp along with that it has oblique ridge which runs in a distal buccal to mesial lingual direction the roots maxillary molar has three roots mesial buccal distal buccal and palatal root then if we talk about the pulp horn at the level of the pulp chamber there are four pulp horns mesial buccal distal buccal mesial palatal and the distal palatal pulp horns now if we take a cross section at the pulpal roof level then the roof is rhomboidal in shape thereafter while progressing towards the floor the roof merges or the pulp chamber merges lingually and at the orifice level or at the ceja level or at the pulpal floor level the shape is triangular let us see how this triangular shape is formed or how axis cavity preparation is done so we will locate the mesobuccal orifice at the mesobuccal cusp tip the palatal orifice somewhere in the middle of the mesobuccal and the dis of the mesial palatal and the distal palatal cusp tip more towards the mesial side and the distal buccal orifice so this could be the possible one possible shape of the triangle which could be formed at the axis after the axis cavity preparation otherwise sometimes what can happen is an obtuse triangle is formed in which all the three canals are located almost in a straight line or else a proper triangle with its apex directed towards the palatal side and base in the directed towards the buccal side can be formed now how do we mark the extent of the cavity the mesial and the distal extent mesially first of all we'll draw or we'll draw an imaginary line which would be joining the cusp tip of the mesial buccal and the mesial palatal cusp whereas distally we'll locate the oblique ridge just at the starting point of the oblique ridge we'll draw an imaginary line now the triangle which would be formed here at this triangular portion we can locate all the canals in a maxillary molar now there could be certain accessory canals which could be present the second and the third mesobuccal distal buccal or the palatal canal so how do we locate the mb2 db2 mb3 db3 or the palatal second or the third canal let us first have a look at the most common locations of these canals if this is the traditional axis cavity where we have located the male canals then at these points we can locate the mb2 canal this is the location of the palatal and this is the location of the distal buccal canal so nalapati has given the most common locations of the mb2 canal the first one is the mb2 canal can be seen on the developmental line joining the mesial buccal and the palatal canal this is the mesial buccal and the palatal canal and the developmental line running from that we can find an mb2 canal on the developmental line sometimes the mb2 canal can also be present mesial to this developmental line so this is the mesial buccal 1 mb1 and the palatal canal this is the developmental line the mb2 canal can be present mesial to this developmental line
along with that sometimes it can be seen on the palatal groove of the mesiobuccal canal this is the mb1 canal so mb2 canal is seen on the groove in the palatal wall of the mesiobuccal canal along with that at the orifice or the ce junction level the, there could be a single buccal canal single mesiobuccal canal and at the junction of the middle third the mb2 canal can split off from the mb1 canal along with that sometimes the mb2 canal can split off from the mb1 canal at the apical third very rarely the mb2 canal can also originate from the buccal wall of the palatal canal so these are the possible locations where we can trace mb2 canal this is the case that these are the anatomical landmarks first of all we'll locate the oblique ridge because we have to mark the extent of our cavity right we will always look for the canals mesial to the oblique ridge since we have a large carious lesion we will be taking a carious approach here i am marking the mesial extent of the cavity now i'll draw a line mesial to the oblique ridge to mark the distal extent of the cavity and in this triangular region we will be locating all the canals but before that we'll be removing all the carious tooth structure this is the radiograph with caries involving pulp a sufficiently widened pulp chamber three roots palatal mesiobuccal and distobuccal root now there are two things that we need to keep in mind mb2 canal is present in 84% of the cases along with that in 55% of the cases the palatal root is curved buccally although we cannot see any such curvature in this case now to begin with we'll use a small round bird and start with the removal of caries caries removal has to be done from periphery to center one must always remember that before approaching or before starting to deroof the pulp chamber we should remove all the caries here while removing the caries i got the first bird drop we will not progress to this bird drop and will not start to deroof the pulp chamber now first of all we'll have will attain a caries free peripheral seal and we will remove all the caries from the periphery and then progress towards the center or then we'll start deroofing the pulp chamber this was the second bird drop that i got okay now that we have removed all the caries from the periphery we will switch to the safe and ex24 bird which is which has a non cutting tip and we'll start to deroof the pulp chamber in a lateral cutting motion initially 
will have a triangular opening after de-roofing the pulp chamber. Now I'll scout for the canals. Here this is the palatal canal. This is the mesiobuccal canal. And this is the distobuccal canal. One pro tip while locating the canals in maxillary molar for the palatal canal the handle of the uh, hand file would be located buccally for the mesiobuccal canal it would be located distolingually and for the distobuccal canal it would be located mesiolingually so the handle would be directed opposite to the location of the canal now here We are looking for the MB2 canal. First of all, we'll look in the developmental line connecting the mesiobuccal and the palatal canal. This is the mesiobuccal canal. Now, see here at the developmental line connecting the mesiobuccal and the palatal canal, I have located the MB2 canal. I am slightly de-roofing the mesiobuccal canal further to have a straight line access to the canal. Now, when we have located the MB2 canal, the triangular shape of the axis cavity would now be converted to a rhomboidal shape for the maxillary molar also. So here, these are the two mesiobuccal canals MB1 and MB2 canal. This is the distobuccal canal. And this one is the palatal canal. So we have located four canals in this maxillary molar. Which is the MB1, MB2, buccal, distobuccal and palatal canal. With this, I conclude this topic. Do let me know in the comment section below if this video has helped you. Also, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the love and abundance. I wish you all happiness and success in life.